Hi, and welcome to another episode of This Expat Life. My name is Amanda Maxime, and I will be your host for today. And today I am joined in a digital studio by Naina Caputi. Naina is founder and CEO of The Expat Woman, and she's also a LinkedIn coach and expert. She's originally from India and now lives in the San Francisco Bay Area in the US. And she helps women leaders, businesses and corporate teams to go from not knowing where to start, being invisible and overlooked, to learning how to strategically leverage LinkedIn to get seen, heard, known and promote their offers to their target audience so they can get the opportunities and success that they want. She actually calls herself the LinkedIn architect, which I really like, as she helps her clients use this platform to build their personal and or business brands, their thought leadership and their connections to get dynamic results. And this is also what we will be talking about today, because LinkedIn can be such a fantastic platform for expats to use for their career. But this is not only what Nina does, it's also her mission to help women like herself who moved abroad to make valuable connections, find jobs, start businesses and find the support they need to navigate their personal and professional lives in a new country. Something that we talk about in this expat life all the time. And this is also why she started the expat woman. Welcome, Nina. Thank you so much, Amanda. I love the, the introduction. You really showcased and shared what I'm all about. So I really appreciate that. And thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, thank you for joining me. And um, you said, oh, I said in your bio that you live in the San Francisco Bay Area. And is that also where you're calling in from now? Yes, I live in, so I live in a suburb about 29 miles from San Francisco. It's called Concord. It's in the East Bay and it's kind of cloudy today and cold. Not as cold as where you are, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. but we have, yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah, it's a yeah, it's a quiet little suburb. Um, so I still get to go into the city, but I have you know this quiet, uh, peaceful life as well. Yeah. Nice, that's very nice. Perfect combination. Yeah. So I'm really happy that you're here on the show today because um, I often talk to my followers and to my coaches actually about LinkedIn, social media uh, for career switches they want to make, side hustles they want to start. And um, LinkedIn can be a bit of a sometimes scary place because it's full of professionals. Um, and sometimes we don't know very well what works and what doesn't work and how you can use the platform also for your career. So I'm super excited that you are here today to, sh to share all your knowledge and expertise on this platform. But can you maybe little, uh, share a little bit about how you got started in this area? Sure. So I, uh, so I moved to the US in 2002 I believe LinkedIn was founded in 2003, 2002, they sat around their kitchen table and discussed about LinkedIn. So the interesting thing was I came to California, to San Francisco, and at that time I lived in the city and LinkedIn was also, uh, you know, uh, formed or launched in the, in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I see that connection, but I didn't know about its existence till 2007 when uh, I was working for a nonprofit organization that actually helped immigrant professionals get jobs in their fields when they moved to a new country initially it was just the US because you know a lot of people come highly qualified and then uh, they don't they don't get hired for the jobs that they studied for in their country or worked in and then they land up being uber drivers or working as dishwashers so we were helping them get back into their fields like and so one of the one of my uh, job seekers that we were training mentioned to me about LinkedIn and he said, I've joined this new social media platform for uh, professionals and I have 500 connections. I was like, wow, you're new to the country and you already have 500 professional connections. So I jumped on the platform. And in those days, LinkedIn was really just uh, like to park your resume. It was all about looking for a job and connecting. So I just blindly connect with people because I want to get to, you know, I want, if you could get 500, I wanted to get 500. But then over the years, uh, I, I made a documentary film, uh, which uh, was about gender violence in India and uh, uh, the di Indian diaspora in North America. And I use LinkedIn a lot to find people uh, to interview. I mean, not so much to interview, but you know, who, those who had nonprofit organizations that work to help women survivors, and then uh, you know, finding sponsors. When I was hosting events for uh, fundraising events for my uh, documentary film, I would find you know, promote it on 
LinkedIn. I'll promote my film on LinkedIn. So I started getting a following and making some really cool connections that were very supportive of my film. And then in 2013, 10 years ago, I launched The Expat Woman. And that was something that I always wanted to do ever since I moved to the US. So uh, when I launched The Expat Woman, I again had to build a network. And at that time, San Francisco was just hopping. Everyone wanted to live and work in the city. Unfortunately, it's not the same now. There's so much that's happened since then. Uh, so organizations wanted to host my events because they wanted to hire more diverse women. They wanted to hire women who were immigrants, who, who were new to the country. And so uh, I started connecting with a lot of those companies online. So, you know, companies like uh, Google and uh, Microsoft and GoPro and uh, Link LinkedIn. I mean, I started co connecting with all these companies and the beauty of LinkedIn was there are no gatekeepers. You can connect with a CEO, you can connect with, uh, you know, a, C a chief financial officer, you can connect yeah. with a HR di director. You I mean, I wouldn't be able to reach them if I just, uh, you know, called or walked into the office. And, uh, and you know, many of them were expats themselves. So they were like very supportive. So that's how I started getting active on LinkedIn was to find sponsors, event hosts, speakers, uh, promote the events, find other expats. And when, then I started hosting events in in, in India, I hosted in Hong Kong and Canada, and then over there to us, it, LinkedIn was so helpful because LinkedIn's global and you can, you know, find people in whichever country you move to or you travel to. So it, it became very, LinkedIn really helped me grow the expat woman. Mm -hmm. And it grew to about 13,000. A lot of them came through LinkedIn. And then unfortunately, when the pandemic happened, my events, in-person events came to a standstill. So, and the one thing I wanted to share was I was I maybe I, not maybe I did suffer from imposter syndrome I felt like I'm curating these events but I'm not good enough to show up on mm -hmm. uh, at my events or even speak live on LinkedIn I would never have done these podcasts I just thought that I'd be behind the scenes because for my documentary film I was in the film and I felt like with the expat woman I needed to be in the background mm -hmm. and also you know I didn't like the way I sounded I don't sound American a lot of my events were in the U.S. you know and I'm sure immigrants can always relate to that right our yeah. accent we don't want to stand out as different even though my events were all for expats and so many different accents but I just felt like uh, you know I just need to be in the background but the the pandemic forced me to step out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and start showing up and so uh, I started posting more on LinkedIn and kind of by default people started reaching out to me asking them to ask me to help them with their LinkedIn profiles or coaching them or working, training their employees or speaking at their events or hosting workshops for their companies. So I never planned to be a LinkedIn coach, consultant and trainer. You know, the pandemic, I'm sure for many of us, right, the pandemic kind of pushed us into yeah. careers that we never dreamed of. And I just realized how much I love LinkedIn and it's helped me so much. So I'm LinkedIn success story. They don't pay me, but it helped me to step out of my comfort zone, showcase my expertise. And now I've helped hundreds of other women do the same. And uh, so that's how I became uh, the LinkedIn coach, consultant and trainer. And then this year I was recognized as one of the top 15 LinkedIn experts in San Francisco, which was a wonderful surprise for me. So mm -hmm. again, it proved that if when you put yourself out there and you do what you're passionate about, you know, the recognition and awards and rewards will, will come, come through. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good reminder. And thank you for sharing your journey and also what you struggled with. I know a lot of my listeners can really relate to that, the standing out part, the imposter syndrome. I, I've also suffered from it. So uh, thank you for sharing. Can you maybe share a little bit more about the importance of LinkedIn for expats who are seeking opportunities abroad uh, when they're maybe still at home or when they already moved to be with a partner, for example? How can right. they help? Great question. So I would say even before you move to another country, you know, start using LinkedIn to find people who live in that country. You know, LinkedIn has a wonderful search feature with filters. Like, for instance, I was uh, earlier this year, we, my family and I, we travel for our summer vacation to Switzerland and Germany. Actually, I wish I had uh, you know, uh, no, no, you're not in Germany. I'm sorry. I'm mixing up with another no, speaker. Yeah, no worries. But I, last year, I went to the Netherlands, actually. Yeah. So, you know, I... Last year, I didn't do this, but this year, I, I looked up who are my connections who live in Switzerland and who live in uh, 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 Germany, and also I went to India after that. 
And I connected with all of them, not connected. I sent a message saying, hey, I'm going to be in the country from this state to this state. Do you want to meet up? So that's, you know, I did it because I was just traveling for a short vacation, but it still was so helpful, right? So I would say do that if you're moving to a new country or you're already living in the country, search for people who, who you are connected with. Because sometimes you might even find people you went to school with or work with in your country have now moved to the same country. Because the beauty of LinkedIn is, uh, it follows you wherever you go because, you know, you usually change your country, even if you're not that active, right? We tend to go into LinkedIn from time to time. So we want to put the right country that we're living in on LinkedIn. So that's one way. Another way is, you know, you can, if you if you haven't yet got your work permit, the LinkedIn has so many training uh, programs that some of them are free. It's called LinkedIn Learning. So you can hone your skills. And the beauty is when you finish a, a, a LinkedIn le a learning program, they give you a certification. So, you know, this is something and it's got uh, it's got topics on all, such a diverse variety of subjects that you will find something that you want to get your expertise in. So that's another thing. You can add your skills to your LinkedIn profile. You can work on updating your profile. And another cool thing about LinkedIn is it has something called a career break, which you can add uh, in your experience section. So if you've because you've traveled to another country. I think it says one of the options is relocation because a lot of expats, especially those who follow their partner who yeah. are not moved to another country because of a job. I mean, for those who move to another country for the job, they won't need to put that. You can put relocation as a career mm. break. So when people look at it, they say, oh, she had this career break because she moved to a new country. And also you can uh, include volunteer of a volunteering that you do. So it also has a volunteer section. So if you're not able to work in the country, it's taking time for you to find a job. You can add those volunteer opportunity, not opportunities, but volunteer, uh, what's the word, whatever. Where we, huh? Experience. Volunteer jobs. Oh yeah, experience, volunteer mm -hmm. experience. Yeah, you could put that uh, as well. So you're constantly building that, uh, your profile. And you have to remember LinkedIn is your digital billboard. Is your It's your 24 seven billboard because mm -hmm. LinkedIn is searchable by Google and Bing. So when people uh, Google yeah. your name, usually your profile shows up right at the top. Like I, okay. as I mentioned, I was an, I, I'd made this documentary film. So I was covered a lot by the media. Uh, and then, you know, with the expat woman, you know, I've done podcasts and, and I'm sure that uh, the same with you because you've been on so many podcast interviews. So there's a lot of hits for your name. But when, but my LinkedIn profile still shows up right at the top yeah, above everything else. You might, you've seen that yeah, too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, so that's why it's so important that your LinkedIn profile showcases who you are, what you want to be known for, where you live, and also thinking about who do you want to see your profile? You know, who's your target audience? Even if you're, even if you're not starting your own business, if you're going to look for a company to work for, or you're looking for opportunities like this to be on a podcast or you're looking you have a book or you want to have speaking engagements you want to having that profile is more than just finding a job it really showcases your thought leadership your expertise and you know I, I know when people go to another country I mean I experienced that too you feel you know you're sometimes if you don't have a job you're very so low self-esteem yeah and you know you don't because people identify you often by the job you have or you identify yourself yeah. Yeah, because you know in the beginning when I was in the US and I'd go to parties or events people say what do you do and I I hadn't got my work permit yet I, I, I you know I didn't have a job and I felt like you know like I don't know what to say right so but if you you know you start working in your profile and then you create all these new additions like you know oh I'm taking a LinkedIn learning course on personal branding you know I'm in transition right now or I'm volunteering at this animal shelter because you've already put those on your profile so you know by creating the profile it's also making you think of you know what is my worth I might not have a job but I'm doing all these other cool things or I'm create or you can start creating content right you can mm -hmm. talk about your experiences in the new country like the beauty of LinkedIn now is no longer this uh you know what I like to say, this platform for dudes in suits, it's for, you know, yeah. it's for anybody, right? It's it's become very creative. It and whether been. you're an expat, you know, you're a, someone who lives in the country that, where, you know, you move from, you know, you can share any stories and you can share personal stories. Like, I don't know if you saw, yesterday was Halloween and I shared 
a photograph of me dressed up as Red Riding Hood and I, I saw it. tied yeah. it up with uh, how Red Riding Hood, what Red Riding Hood and LinkedIn have in common. So you can even tie your personal photographs into with something professional. So I would say LinkedIn is such a great way for expats to really express and showcase yeah. their journeys and what they're going through and what they want to be known for. I love this. Yeah, I love this, especially because like you said, when you move abroad for relocation, especially if you don't have a job, you need to build your identity again. And so yeah. LinkedIn is a fantastic way. And especially in a country where you don't know how things are, are run, you know, um, LinkedIn is a fantastic way, I think, to build that identity for yourself again, like a new opportunity. Yeah, right. No, and I love what you said, building the identity. That's That's the key word, building the identity. Yeah. Yeah. And what about um, if you live abroad, like I come from the diplomacy world and uh, there were a lot of partners who uh, traveled with the, the diplomats they were in a, married to uh, and they sometimes couldn't work, but they knew it's just going to be two, three, four years. Um, so they wanted to remain relevant for job opportunities back home when they would return. How can LinkedIn be of help to stay connected to those kind of opportunities back home? So I would say, if you know, so that's, I mean, that's wonderful. If they know what they want to eventually do when they move back, start following companies that you want to work for. Say, you know, someone wants to work for uh, an AI company when they move back to their country. So look for the companies that, uh, you know, are in that field or in that industry and then start following them, start leaving comments on mm. that company page because the company posts about you know they do trending posts and they it's because it's also a way to keep updated you know with the, not only the company and what they're up to but also a lot of companies share news and trends and statistics and all that good stuff you can also see who's working at the company and start building those relationships start commenting on those people's posts start con you know connect with them send them direct messages because what happens with many of us is we wait till there's something that we need like you know a job or like in my case a summit you know like yeah. or you know your podcast whatever and then we start wanting to build those relationships so if you have three or four years in another country and you know you're going to move back you have that much time to start doing that and LinkedIn is uh, the world's largest social media platform for professionals and when I say professional it doesn't mean you have to have a job you could be in you know as I said career break because of a relocation but you know you can still be building those connections you can still be sharing content if you're not comfortable sharing content you know way of creating content is by reposting someone else's yeah. post and adding your thoughts to it so maybe a sentence or two and I mean I don't advocate for chat GPD but you know you can at least get inspiration you could share the post that you want to repost in chat GPT if those of you know what it is if, if you don't you know I'll have to come back and do another podcast interview or people will have to google hey, it people know people know <laughs> you know okay so you know just put the post in chat GPT and say can you give me some uh, suggestions on how to comment or, you know, or share my insights. And then chat GPT will give you something. And again, do not copy and paste. LinkedIn's about being authentic and sharing yeah. your voice. So you it's just the suggestions and then you can, uh, then you'll have that aha moment and then you can kind of put it in your voice or tweak it. So th that's my only, like if you use chat GPT, please do not copy and paste. Yeah, people no. are really smart on LinkedIn. I hear a lot of people complaining on LinkedIn that sometimes they can tell when a comment or yeah. post is, by chat gpt yeah so that would, i see that too yeah yeah it's so obvious now so that would be my but i'm saying that's something you can do you know you can curate people's posts and when you curate someone's post tag the person say you're you're going to repost my summit or the podcast that amanda's just doing with me and you want to repost your network it'll say repost with your thoughts tag amanda tag me tag whoever the author is of that post even if you're not connected with them and say mm -hmm. you know this post this really spoke to me or this podcast really spoke to me, maybe share a key takeaway that maybe chat GPT shared with you. And then, you know, uh, yeah, tag the people and use a few hashtags as well. Yeah, good, good, good suggestions. And I would love it if people would share my podcast on LinkedIn. So please feel free to, to do so if you listen to this. Um, Something that I also, uh, so uh, in, reading in between the lines, like there are lots of practical suggestions, but I also heard you say like, 
um, start before you actually need something. So LinkedIn is still a network, right? And you need to invest in your network before you can reap the benefits of it. So that's what I hear you say as well. Like if you go back, if you know you're going back home at some point, maybe in half a year or a year, and you already know more or less what field you want to work on, use those remaining months to really give to your network and to build your network. Uh, so you can reap the benefits when you are uh, returning home. I love that. Yeah, don't it shouldn't be transactional. It shouldn't be like just one way because some people yeah. just want to, they just want to take, take, take. We have to all remember, especially expats, we all have value and expertise and experiences to share. You know, sometimes you think, oh, we didn't work for four years because I was a, you know, a trailing spouse and, you know, but you lived in a country that, you know, you experience so much that other people wouldn't. I mean, you're bringing yeah. that international experience with you to the job. Like if you live, say in your case, you lived in Brazil and you come back to the Netherlands and you're changing careers and you're going to work for a tech company. You have four years of living in that country. You might have picked up some Portuguese, you know, it just, yeah. I just think that, that the most important thing, and that's the, I see a lot of uh, expats face these challenges. They feel they, because they didn't work, or that they live somewhere else for a while where maybe it wasn't as the country wasn't as progressive or whatever mm -hmm. that they they're taking a step back but that's not true the world has become global and with the pandemic i think it's really helped with like remote work and you know bringing in people from all over so uh, i just want people to remember that you have unique experiences value and expertise that people will benefit from so don't ever think that i'm not good enough or look at all these other people doing all this amazing work and I'm in no way equal to them. Do not put anyone else on a pedestal. And yeah. this can happen on LinkedIn. So do not, that's imposter syndrome. To, yeah, or, you know, I like that you head. share this because even, so I, I coach a lot of uh, high achieving experts who have amazing jobs. Uh, they're not trailing spouses. They have their, their jobs abroad and yet they still feel like an imposter. Um and you also mentioned about sharing your voice on LinkedIn. And I know this can be scary, not just for trailing spouses, like what do I have to share? They could think that, but also for these high achieving expats who have amazing jobs. They're just not used to really taking up their space uh, on LinkedIn or maybe elsewhere online. So do you have any tips for those people who want to yeah, get their voices out there a little bit more, but are being held back by fear at the moment? Sure. So I would say like focus on... Uh... Don't focus on your fear, focus on adding value. You know, think about even if one person benefits from what I have to share, right? Maybe the person will not even comment on your post because uh, I just want to take a step back. There's over 985 million users on LinkedIn, but only one to 3% are active on the platform. And then I say active, meaning they comment or they create posts. So again, this is such a fantastic opportunity for anyone listening to be in that one to 3% because you want to stand yes. out. And as I said before, you have value and expertise to share. So if you if fear is stopping you from putting yourself out there, just think like I'm doing myself a disservice. I'm doing people who can benefit from what I have to share a disservice. So you're not boasting, you're not bragging, you're not showing off, you're actually going to help someone. I've had so many people who... I, they never even commented on my post, but then I meet them at events. So they send me a direct message. They say, you know, you, I've learned so much from everything you've shared. You know, uh, this, this helped me get a job or this helped me get over this hurdle. So just add value. And if you think that you're not good enough to add value, if you, you're a high achieving expat, or even if you're a expat wife, you, you have experiences that people will benefit from. I just, yeah. I keep that state sent statement up but i think that you know and women yeah. and expert women have the biggest issue with this you yeah. know yeah no and it's good that you repeat it actually because i think <laughs> this is the, the key for people to learn if they really want to become more active on on social media and i so agree like i have really silent followers who, who never really comment on anything but then all of a sudden i get a message from them and they're like oh yeah i'm like i always listen to all your podcasts or what you shared about this and that really resonated with me so i'm like okay yeah actually my voice is being heard and it's it's for the good you know people are are using it in a way so I really like this advice. Yeah. Um, maybe like if you're ready to 
take up that space on LinkedIn. What is the best marketing strategy? Well, I use the word marketing because I'm an entrepreneur, so I think that way. But let's say you have a side hustle or you're just an employee, but you want to increase your personal brands a bit more. What is currently the best strategy to get the most engagement and reach on LinkedIn? Sure. So I think the first thing when you get onto LinkedIn, even if you are on LinkedIn and you want to get more active is you need to know what you want to be known for, what your goal is. Like, why are you on LinkedIn? If you have a job, is it because you you have a job already, but you want to be active on LinkedIn so your employers will hear your voice, see you as a thought leader, maybe give you more opportunities. Maybe you want to build your network. If you're an entrepreneur, maybe you want to get more sales. Because I've been on Instagram for a bit. I've been on Facebook, uh, link, Twitter for a bit, LinkedIn, YouTube. But I feel of all the platforms, LinkedIn is the most advanced in terms of showcasing your expertise because if you look at the LinkedIn profile, no other platform gives you these many sections and fields to share what what you want to be known for. You have your you have your banner, you have your headline, you can record your voice, and that's another important thing. Like you know, we have different. Uh, name pronunciations because we're from so many different countries so you can record your voice and add a little bit of your personal brand because on my if you if you go to my profile you'll see a little speaker you click on that you'll say hi I'm Naina Kaputi and I'm a link I forgot what I say but something about be helping women with LinkedIn so you know you can keep changing that uh, then you have the about section you have your experience section you can add volunteer stuff you can add a featured section so just in that you know just the LinkedIn profile itself gives you so many options but you want to make sure that the profile showcases what you want to be known for if if people go to your profile and it doesn't really say what you want to be known for they're going to move on yeah. right so that's I'd say that's it's a strategy if you're going to market yourself market yourself as an entrepreneur as a someone working for a company as a podcast host, whatever it is, you want to uh, complete have an updated profile. You want to have a goal because when you have a goal and you know what you want to be known for and who your target audience is and how, what are you going to help them solve? Because even if it's some, you know, even if, if it's like a, an author, right? Or a, you work for a company, you still want to say, you know, keep your target audience in mind. So keep, these are the four things that you need to know what your goal is on LinkedIn. You need to know what you want to be known for. You need to know uh, who your audience is, who you're speaking to and what problem do you help them solve? So yeah. that should come across in your profile, in your about section, in your experience section and in the content that you create in the comments you post. Because I have two babies. I'm the LinkedIn I'm a LinkedIn coach and I, the founder of the expat woman, yeah. right? So I, I mean, I use more of LinkedIn on because it is a LinkedIn platform, but I do very often bring in the expat aspect as well and how LinkedIn can help expats. So, you know, you can even have more than one uh, profession, but you, and you have to learn how to balance them. So I think that's really important. And the other thing, it's a keywords because LinkedIn is searchable, not just on Google, but also on LinkedIn, right? Mm -hmm. So think of, when someone wants to hire me, or whether it's for a job, whether it's for a business, whether it's you know to be a speaker at a summit, what keywords would they look for? So, you know, like all of us do keywords in the LinkedIn search or on Google that mm -hmm. will show up, that will show me, uh, you know, show up in their search. So that's another strategy. And then yeah. finally, I would say, you know, uh, I mentioned this earlier, but who do I want to connect with? Who do I want in my audience? Because a lot of people. We just accept every connection. Like I said, initially, when I joined LinkedIn, it was all about just building your network. So even if people shouldn't be in my network, I would add them. Now I'm very strategic about who I want in my network. I check their profiles. When I get an invitation, I look at the profile. If it's like, you know, no profile image, we have never, ever posted, you know, the experience because a lot of bots and a lot of scammers and yeah. spammers. So you know, be careful about who you want in your network. Be strategic. Don't focus on the quantity. Focus on the quality. Because, uh, you know, your, you mentioned earlier, your network has so much importance. Your network is your net worth. Yeah. So you could have like 500 connections, but if those translate into you getting the opportunities you want, it's better than having 5,000 or 50,000 or whatever the number. So that would be another strategy. And then when you connect with people, if it's for a specific reason, then include a direct message. 
saying why you're connecting with them. Maybe, you know, this, maybe someone listened to this podcast and they want to connect with me in this. So they send me a message saying, I heard you on Amanda's podcast and I would, you know, I really like this about what you had to say and I'd love to connect. I'm definitely going to accept the connection, yeah. right? So also that's another important step. Yeah, great. So it starts with really the basics, like knowing who you want to target, your goal, what you want to show to the world. Um, then it's about building that network. And then what if you're ready for that next step, like really posting something yourself? Um, right. And maybe this is a little bit more practical, but uh, I have very, I have a lot of talks with my friends, uh, entrepreneur friends about this, like what is the best strategy for LinkedIn? Because they recently changed the algorithm again. Um, so I know my posts are doing a little bit less uh, well compared to last year. Uh, so I have uh, my reach is a little bit lower. Um, and uh, I have friends who post every day. I have other friends who post twice a week. And we're not really sure like what is the best um, yeah, strategy for LinkedIn to post. So what are your so thoughts? I, yeah, so my, yeah, the algo algorithm keeps changing. But you have to remember only 1% to 3% are commenting on posts out of the LinkedIn excuse me linkedin's not showing your post to everyone if you have like yeah. 2000 connections only some of them up so you can repurpose your content so you're not reinventing the wheel another strategy is once you create a post you can comment on at least five people's posts so then they might come and look at your post and that might also trigger the algorithm to uh, show your post to more people because again i said it shouldn't be one way it has to be give and take so you know yeah. find people in your network who are active on LinkedIn, who are creating content, who are responding to comments, right? And then comment on, on those people's posts and they may most likely will come and comment. So find like five to 10 people and comment regularly on that post. People who are engaged because some people who just create content, but they never ever comment on yeah. other people's posts. So be strategic about that as well. And that might bring more audience because it's all about engagement and being, you know, creating conversations Again, be strategic about who you comment, who's post you comment, and are these people who have your target audience or are these random people, you know, because yeah. you want that target audience to then come and comment on your post and you also want the creator of the comment of the post to also comment. So that's, yeah. you have to be strategic as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thank you. And um, what about like the type of content? Because a while ago, I think it was six months ago, LinkedIn is very popular in the Netherlands. Uh, we use it a lot, but I saw so many posts about like, oh, I got married. Oh, my daughter graduated. I'm so proud of her. Oh, like I have a disease uh, 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 I will never get, uh, I will never recover from. And it was at some point I thought like, wow, all these heavy stories, like it's a bit too much for me. And it seems like they kind of changed the algorithm about the heavy personal, almost Facebook life, Facebook like kind of content content towards more like, okay, but what are you giving your audience? Is that true? It is. It is. It's, it's definitely become more personal, but I think it's also about building the no like and trust factor. Because before that LinkedIn was very professional. So I would say if you're doing four posts a, a month, or five posts, do one personal post because showing, you know, who you really are, like, you know, what, what are some of the struggles? It, it builds empathy and it also builds connections. Like, you know, when I got my U.S. citizenship, I've been in the U.S. for 21 years, but I just sat on the U.S. citizenship part because I was like, I want to hold on to my Indian passport. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I have a sore throat, so I'm sounding a little like squeaky, but... <laughs> <clears throat> it's good when i did get my u.s citizenship during covid i went in the morning to san francisco and by the evening i had my u.s citizenship i went for an interview you know they do the interviews the naturalization interview and usually you get your citizenship like three or four months later mm -hmm. and because it was covid they uh, i think they just wanted to rush the process so i got my so i created a post about that i was outside the the u.s uh, uh uci i whatever it is, where you, your naturalization office with my mm -hmm. certificate. Because I couldn't even take the photograph inside because it was COVID. They, it was like within five minutes, we were given the certificate. And yeah. I spoke about how I, I went to San Francisco in the morning as an Indian citizen. And then I was leaving as a U.S. citizen. Oh. And this during COVID and how, and I tied it in with how sometimes when you least expect something, it happens, you know, so yeah. be pre prepared for the inevitable because I wasn't even dressed properly. Like if I'd known I'd have dressed up, I'd, it was just my husband. He came with me and 
I didn't have my kids or my family. You know, it's also different yeah. because usually it's a big deal in the US. They have like the, you can call your family and they have a party. So anyway, that post went viral on on LinkedIn. I mean, it wasn't I wasn't teaching people about LinkedIn tips, right? But I was showing yeah. something personal and how yeah. it's you know for twenty years I didn't I I didn't get my US passport and all that stuff. So it's kind of like personal. In the past, I would never have done something like that. But LinkedIn is kind of encouraging people. So you can share a story and share maybe like a little the moral behind the story. Yeah. You know, Unless yeah. You, you can it. just, yeah. But it's not like Instagram, but you're always posting about your food or, you know, like your, when I went to, when I travel abroad, I post sometimes photographs about wherever I am. Like when I was in in Europe this year, I think I posted something about being in Europe, but I forgot, but I was thinking about how sometimes you need to take a break from, you know, your professional life and or maybe also I mentioned how I was connecting with people who lived in those countries so you can do your personal thing but if you want to be strategic tie it in with like some kind of tip or some kind of strategy that you're following so it's not yeah. just but I think I like seeing personal posts from time to time because it gives me a sense of the person yes. you don't have to show photos of your kids or you know your dogs and so, I mean people do but it's again what does your audience want and what do you want to be known for like I love cats so do I also want to be known as someone who loves cats yeah. you know I love exactly. travel so it's it's about finding that balance and you'll only find that by putting it out there if you're like always like oh my gosh what should I post give it a shot just step out of your comfort zone and just post you know and it will come I never thought I was a writer in fact when I first started the expert woman I used to ask my sister-in-law to help me write stuff and now by posting regularly it kind of flows yeah. it just comes so easily so you know I think you just have to do it and don't worry about getting comments don't worry about making a fool of yourself don't worry about being judged just post it and do this personal post so I would say one personal post a, a, a week I mean a month then mm -hmm. maybe one post where you can share your expertise then one post where you can share something like a trend that's happening in your industry mm -hmm. and then maybe one post where you have a call to action you know maybe you have like a course coming up or a you know an event or a podcast you don't do every, you don't want every post to be listen to my latest podcast I also have a LinkedIn YouTube channel but I don't post every week you know yeah. about every I, I put up put up a new LinkedIn video every week but I want I try to kind of you know space it out yeah smart yeah so yeah so yeah. I said follow that uh, you know the yeah four different kinds of posts so it makes it easier for you then to decide what you want to create yeah yeah exactly okay that, that's great practical advice thanks and um a question I got from one of my followers was also is uh LinkedIn premium worth the money in your great opinion? question I'd say if you're just starting off don't go with LinkedIn premium just start doing all the everything that I suggested here once you you know, once you get really active on LinkedIn, maybe then you can look at premium. Some of the things that premium provides, for instance, you can add, uh, I, if you look at my profile, it says check on my website. So you'll see a button there that come or it'll be um, book an appointment. LinkedIn has now these ability to add these extra buttons and they show up. If, you, if someone has like, if you send me a message or if I comment, you'll see below my name, it'll say check out my website. If I've I had book an appointment, so that you've seen that, so that's yeah. that's. I mean, so for businesses uh, or entrepreneurs, that might be really valuable, or even someone who has a podcast. You know, I I don't know if it has a very limited number of uh, call to actions, but that's one advantage of premium. Another one is you can uh, you can go to people's profiles incognito, so they don't know that you view their profiles. You know, maybe you want to keep checking out competitors' profiles, and you don't, and they're like, "Wow, she's checking on my profile every day." So that it just says, you know, LinkedIn user viewed your profile. You can also like, like, for instance, I like build, I'm like being very strategic about building my network. So I do a lot of searches. So with premium, you can do, you know, unlimited searches for people mm -hmm. and filters. And you can, you get free access to LinkedIn learning courses. So these, so those things are important to you, then, you know, maybe getting premium. But as I said, if it's, if the other things I share, like creating content, you know, connecting with people, sending DMs, uh, you know, creating um, a post or, or videos, all those different forms of content, it's all free. So if you can manage yeah. with that, don't do premium till 
you feel I've done, I've done everything and now I want to move to the next level. Yeah, good advice. Okay, nice. And uh, a final question on LinkedIn. Um, going forward, do you see LinkedIn being the number one platform um, for professionals? And what are some trends that you are spotting right now about the usage of LinkedIn? Sure. So it is, a, it is a, and I'm not, they don't pay me. As I said, I've tried other platforms, but I, LinkedIn is the leading platform, the fastest growing platform, the biggest platform for professionals. Because as I said, Instagram, if you look at, if you look at comments on Instagram, people will just put emojis or they'll say, you look at comments on LinkedIn, they're very insightful, right? Mm -hmm. Also, as you look at the profile, it's LinkedIn is adding more and more features. I mean, I think this year alone, it's added 150 plus new features so they are creating more opportunities for people to be everyone to become a content creator so their belief is anyone can be a content creator so they get the trends i see are they're providing more opportunities for people like you me anyone to be visible to showcase our expertise build our thought leadership build our brand because they also have things like linkedin audio which was you know if you've heard of clubhouse you can now yeah. linkedin does the same thing with linkedin audio you can do linkedin lives and you know you mentioned me being the linkedin architect the reason why i call myself that is because when i work with my clients especially women my goal is to help them instead of waiting to be invited to have a seat at the table you know whether it's being invited to be on a podcast or being invited to and, you know, to speak at an event with LinkedIn, you can do all that yourself. You can build yeah. your own deal and then invite other people to have a seat at the table. Right. So, yeah. You, you, yeah, you don't even need to, you know, you can start or you can host a LinkedIn audio event and you can be the speaker. You can bring someone on. So you're hosting an event. You're being the speaker by creating content. You don't need to wait for people to invite you to be uh, on their a guest a blog post or you can create your own articles on LinkedIn. Another thing I didn't mention was LinkedIn newsletters. You can LinkedIn now allows you to create your own newsletter. So you don't even need to go on a platform like MailerLite or MailChimp. You can create newsletters on LinkedIn. So these are all ways for you to build your table and showcase yourself as an expert. And we all have expertise. I just want to say that again. We all do. We all have unique experiences. So this is what the trend that LinkedIn is uh, is offering us, providing us an opportunity to build our own table, spot shine the spotlight on ourselves, and then spotlight other people as well. So you know, so yeah. and then one other thing is you can create your own LinkedIn group, and you know you can bring people in. And finally, I want to add why I think it's the number one platform is LinkedIn is coming down heavily on fake profiles. You know, like in Facebook and Instagram, you don't know who the people are half the, yeah. half the time, right? LinkedIn, if you don't have your face on it, if you uh, if you don't, uh, you know, if you have some kind of weird stuff in your profile, they can, someone can flag it or they'll see it and they'll take you down. They'll take your profile down. And now they've started something new, which is, hasn't come to Europe as yet, but we have it in North America, Mexico and India is where you can be verified that you are a real person using your government uh id so mm -hmm. if, you know for instance the us you can use your your government uh, assigned id or your passport in india i know they use something called the Aadhaar card which is like a social security card so that's the verification if you go to my profile you see next to my name a little checkbox so that's the verification so that's right. another reason which is makes because we we don't we, we are all on linkedin because it's a platform we want to use to achieve our goals, right? So we want to be connecting with people who are real people, not fakes, and who are yeah. genuine, genuine yeah. professionals. So that's another trend that LinkedIn is getting stricter and stricter with fake profiles and making it possible for only people who mean, uh, you know, to do business or mean to connect or be professional. Mm. For this. So, uh, yeah, those are the trends. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, and maybe now, uh, also as we're finishing this interview in a little bit, um, your other baby, <laughs> the expat woman, um, next week, uh, we're going to have the expat woman summit, for which I will also be a speaker. And once again, thank you for inviting me to speak at the summit. I'm really, really excited about it. Can you maybe share a little bit about the expat woman summit and why you decided to organize it? Sure. So the expat woman is 10 years old and before that, thank you for being a speaker because I was telling Amanda before we started recording the interview, I handpicked my speakers this year. So I heard Amanda, I don't even know how I came across your podcast, but I heard your podcast. I listened to some of them and I was like, I need to have a 
you know, as one of my speakers. So, uh, yeah, so so the expat woman, I found it in 2013 in San Francisco. And uh, this year I decided on its 10th anniversary, I need to do something. But again, I didn't want to limit it to San Francisco because I do have a global audience. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to do a summit. I've hosted several virtual summits. I did host the Survive and Thrive Abroad Summit a few years ago when the pandemic hit for my expat network. But this year I decided I'd call it the Expat Woman Summit because we were talking about personal branding, right? Or, or company branding. And why should I change the name to Survive and Thrive Abroad? I want to build the brand name of the expat woman. Yeah, so yeah. it's, yeah. yeah. So it's a three day summit and uh, I'm bringing together 18 speakers from across the globe and then me as well. And I was thinking of key topics that, you know, a lot of expats uh, have challenges of uh, face hurdles. And so that's how I decided on the speaker. So it's, again, there's so many topics. I cannot cover every topic. So, yeah. so, so and I also made it online and I'm doing them pre-recorded because not everyone can join live because we are in so many different time zones, including our speakers. We have some, the speaker who lives in New Zealand, another speaker who lives in Singapore. We have speakers in Europe. We have a speaker who's in India. So it's just impossible to get everyone at the same time, so when if you look at the guest list, it's even more diverse in terms of the countries. So yeah. every day for the three days, seven to the nine, the videos will be released at eight a.m. PST, which is uh, eleven a.m. EST, and I think it's three p.m. the UK time. But then they're available for twenty-four hours. The first day, the topics will be on mindset, m mental health, and wellness. The second day will be personal and professional development and finance, and the third day will be job a search and careers and you know honing your skills and expat careers etc so <clears throat> so that's a, the summit and uh, amanda uh, you are going to be speaking on do you want to share what you will be speaking Absolutely. on yeah i'm yeah. going to uh, have a presentation on the four pillars to focus on to go from surviving to thriving abroad and this is really how I always work from the inside out. So it's really starting with you, what you can change inside of you so you can create that reality that really makes you thrive. And I won't awesome. share more because you just have to listen to the presentation. Right. And I'll yeah. be talking, I mean, I did share a lot today about LinkedIn, but, you know, I'll be doing like a presentation. So it'll be more focused and specific. So I'm actually going to be doing a bonus workshop on on uh, how expats can use LinkedIn. And I'm also my regular presentation is on managing imposter syndrome abroad, which is something I have dealt with and which I am getting better dealing with. And I think mm -hmm. that's what a lot of expats focus, uh, I mean, struggle with. So uh, yeah, and I'm really excited about the summit and bringing women together. We have a Facebook group so people can connect in there. We'll have a couple of live sessions so guests can connect with the speakers. And then we have... If people, the summit is free, but if people want to watch the recordings after the 24 hours is up, we also have an all access pass. And then we have an expat power pack, which also includes all the recordings for one year, as well as some really cool bonuses from our speakers and also recordings to our previous summit, Survive and Thrive Abroad. And Amanda, you can share your link in, in the comments of this I will. podcast. Yeah, show notes. I so. definitely will. And I also uh, included something for the expert power pack. So one of my trainings, the expert's path, um, that includes one of my yeah most popular coaching exercises. I included a, a video training in the, the power pack. So if people uh, get access to the power pack, they will also receive that training from me. That's very generous of you. Thank you. That sounds great. And I, in my bonus to the expert power pack is the LinkedIn VIP package. So I have lots of videos in there for specific topics on LinkedIn, like starting your LinkedIn company page, creating a LinkedIn audio event and uh, using creator mode on LinkedIn. So you can watch those. And then it has a LinkedIn playbook and other uh, LinkedIn tips and strategies as well. So awesome. these yeah. are just some of the goodies. We have others from other speakers as well. Yeah, and the speakers are amazing. I'm really thrilled. I was looking at the speaker list and I connected with all of them on LinkedIn now. And these are really, really amazing women uh, who have a lot to share with a lot of expertise and also how they are in life, like their, their way of looking at life. I think it's super inspiring. So I can't wait to also hear from them uh, on their right. topics of expertise. Yeah, and yeah, speakers are all amazing. And we have one speaker who won Mrs. Universe this year, 2020 to 2020. Ah. Yeah, her name is Vanita Ingram. 
And she also runs a, a reality show called the Ingrams International, for which showcases expats. And she's the first Black woman to win Mrs. Universe. So, you oh, know, it's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I'm sure you're going to interview her at some point. I mean, she, her story, I, will, yeah. I mean, they're, they're all great, but this was like, wow, we have a Mrs. Universe in our, yeah. among our uh, you know, a group of speakers. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. Nice. Yeah. Nina, one last question that I asked to all my guests on this expat life, and that is, what is your number one hack to make uh, living or traveling abroad easier? And this can be a mindset thing, a habit, a product. Um, yeah. What do you want to share? I would say, th I, I'd say for me, it was like finding your tribe or your community, because I think when you have that when you have a supportive peer group, then everything else uh, falls into place. So maybe finding a meetup, finding, uh, you know, a community like the expat woman, because it doesn't have to be in that city or country. It could even be a group of women who are experiencing what you face. So yes. I think finding, finding, you know, this circle of women who are experiencing what you are experiencing will help make that journey abroad easier because they can sure share their pros and the cons of living abroad and what worked and didn't work so don't struggle alone you know yeah. find find uh find friends find a network find a support group yeah that's a really great tip thank you for sharing that and for anyone who wants to create that support group in i think it's the first episode of this expert life i share all my tips uh, about finding friends and creating a community abroad so uh, make sure to listen to that episode Okay, Nina, thank you so much for sharing all your tips. I will definitely start applying them. I was doing a few of them already, but I also heard a few new things. I'm sure it's super valuable to my listeners, uh, especially the high achieving expats uh, who are always looking for new career opportunities, I think, uh, or at least to increase their expertise and their authority in their area. So thank you again. And I look forward to seeing you next week at the Expat Woman Summit. Thank you so much, Amanda. And I'm sorry if my, at times my brain froze because it's like early in the morning here and I'm like recovering from a cold. So <laughs> I realize that I'm, oh gosh, I'm stammering or, you know, my mind's not working, but that's for who I am. That's my authentic yes. self. You know, it's like, you know, go with the flow. You can never be perfect. So perfection, yes. yeah, imperfection can still add value. So I just wanted to add that. See, none yeah. of us are perfect, right? Yeah, I, I've no. spoken so many podcasts and events and I still at times stammer or forget certain words so it yeah. gives me an example when imposter syndrome says you're not good enough to be on a podcast or speak at an event or show up on LinkedIn just do exactly. it exactly exactly and I thought you were amazing anyway I didn't notice anything so <laughs> thank you for adding that okay you're thank welcome. you Nina. Thanks.